Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Infrastructure Meeting. It's September 15th, 2020. Uh, let's take a look at the agenda and be sure that we've got the right things and talk about them in the right order. So what I had on the agenda, incrementals, status report, Tim, from you just briefly, Kubernetes upgrade, mirror status report, if anything, uh, Docker terms of service, not sure if we need that one. Uh, JFrog Artifactory, that's a heads up one that I wanted to talk briefly about. Jira upgrade status, Oracle Cloud, Azure customer success, and then one that I'd like to propose to move earlier in the meeting to be sure we get to it, release status reports. Anything else that um, people are feeling like we need to include on the agenda? Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the long agenda. Okay. All right, then. Uh, Tim, you want to give us the latest on incrementals on Kubernetes? Uh, there's been a couple of small features uh, from Jesse and Gavin and all deployed fine, no issues. And there are no, no reports of any issues with that. Excellent. So that means we've really switched away from the Azure functions entirely to running on, on a Kubernetes based Docker image. For, for this, there are still other functions that we have on Azure. Ah, there are. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything that does anything? Um, there are things that are being hit um, pretty frequently, if I remember. Uh, let me look real quick. There's a function for promoting staging to production automatically, but that's been broken for ages. Probably pretty simple to fix. <laughs> but. Sorry, you guys can, you can continue. I have to enter my code and stuff for my authenticator. So it's right. gonna be a minute. Okay. <laughs> well, but I think that's, a, that's an interesting one to, to have on the agenda, even if we don't get to it till next week. Great, to be sure that if there are other Azure functions we could, we could or should migrate away from, it's good to know. There's no reason to migrate away. It was, the reason that we did for incrementals was mostly that some of the incrementals runs take to, take longer than you're allowed to run on the function we were doing it on. And yeah. also the, log, the logs weren't the easiest and weren't the most accessible. And since incrementals is used so much, it was just a no brainer to kind of move it over and onto something that's a little bit more stable and under our control. Great. Okay. So, so this, this migration was a, an intentional because of demands we place on the function, not some general purpose limitation of Azure functions we should move away from. Thanks for the clarity. Yeah. There's, okay. so the only other one that's getting hit somewhat frequently is comment logger, which I am not sure what it's actually doing. I haven't looked at the code. It posts some of the Jenkins build result into the GitHub PR at least. And I think it only runs on the infra org. Okay. So it's probably posting Jenkins. It's probably posting Jenkins to IO build failures. Gotcha. If it, still, if it still works, I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. Okay. It probably There's... hasn't worked since the password reset. To be honest, mm. I don't think I've seen that in ages. Yeah. So, so uh, we have an analytics bouncer. We have comment logger. We have evergreen upload. And evergreen is dead, so we can get rid of that one. Um, then the infra auto PR are the um, four that are on there. So. <laughs> Yeah, so I think those two just need fixing probably. <laughs> it would be good to get them back, especially the info auto pair. Okay, so so I'll have to I'll listen to the to the recording later and put the detailed list in. I wasn't nearly fast enough to get the entire list into the notes, Alex. I I think we can just say look at the um, four remaining um functions and see if we actually need them cool it's, it's not terribly important anyway yeah right. I mean, okay. we, we've been working without them for a while so they're obviously not critical to our infrastructure at this point right okay <laughs> kind of you want nice to take task. the next one? Oh. no sorry i was done kubernetes yep. upgrade mm -hmm. Let me just check if the one issue is still actually on screen. No one's going to. Um, no, so that came right. Um, so that, yeah, that was 
Yeah, that was done. Uh, I did it. I was going to do it the day after the infra meeting. Then I realized it was LTS release day. So I should probably not do that. Um, so I did it the day after that. Um, went from 1.15 to, so it had to be a two stage. So I did it 1.15 to 1.16 and then 1.16 to 1.17. It was actually a four stage because you have to do the masters and then the no pulls um, and then wait for all the no pulls to finish before you can do the next one. Um, but yeah, so it was all fine. The only issue I had was um, Loki was still bound to an exclusive volume and it wouldn't let go. I ended up just leaving it because I figured it would probably come right. Um, and I just checked it now and it has. It was, it was and nothing needed changing. I, and then I ran the build and it all was fine. Excellent, so this is done. Yep, yeah, I've, I also found that the Jenkins, so the Terraform code was still pointing to 1.14. So Olivia, when he did the last update, didn't update Terraform, um, but I've updated that to the latest version. Excellent. So and and really excellent because I had I did not detect one single thing relative to that. That's great. I assume there was some some brief offline periods for some pieces of this. Yeah, some alerts did trigger. It was about under a minute's downtime, I think. I don't know why it happened. It shouldn't really have happened, but um, yeah, there was like a minute blip. Oh, well. Excellent. That's great. Anything more that needs to be done there? Anything that you want to flag? No, it was all fine. Excellent. Thank you. Mirror status report. Uh, I haven't had any time to work on the decommissioning, but we just need to decommission it, decommission the old one. And is, when we decommission, wait. Yeah, the old server. So it's, we, we need a, we need to find a latest Windows download link, and. Um, get the and move the LTS RC process to release.ci. And I noticed right, my, Chrome, right. my Chrome is flagging warnings um, on the um, Windows download because it's a mixed content. So it's, it's currently pointing at the old one, which is on HTTP. And by default, it won't let me download it. Okay. Yeah, and that that makes sense that it would flag it, right? Because you're you're switching from secure to insecure. Okay. Yeah. So that's just a needs fixing. There might already be a link. I'm not sure. Well, I'm well, not we, sure that the that the, might need to add those link, builds are being simple. uploaded. Yeah, we need to figure that out. That's all. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, change in Docker terms of service. I have no nothing new to report there compared to last week. Um, any any red flags from others? I haven't been following it very much at this point. It was time, skip. Okay, great. JFrog Artifactory. So there's been discussion. So JFrog hosts repos.jenkins-ci.org for us. And they, they have flagged to us, hey, we're worried that you're using an awful lot of bandwidth and an awful lot of, uh, yeah, bandwidth was the primary concern. They've scheduled a meeting today with me, Daniel Beck, and several of their people to discuss. Uh, we'll listen, hear what their concerns are, try to understand them. Our goal is to continue hosting our artifacts on that repository. And if they say, oh, you need to reduce in this way or that way, we'll look for ways to do those reductions. I'd really rather not have to create a project that moves us off JFrog Artifactory to some other artifact hosting system. I just don't want to spend the time. 
Uh, I'm assuming that the two of you are okay not being included in that meeting. We can certainly include you if you feel to join. It will be, it will start in about three or four hours. I'm, I'm fine not being there. Can't do it anyway, but no, I'm fine. Okay, all right. Okay, last topic, or no, next topic, release status report. So 2.257 released today, and in an awkward, embarrassing thing, it had the same problem as 2.256, no Microsoft, no MSI installer. And the reason it has no MSI installer is Microsoft minor numbers and major numbers cannot exceed 256. So we had the same failure last week, and I failed to detect it. Sorry about that. Um, we won't get a new MSI installer until we find a different way to represent the version number in that installer. 2.256.build number. Yeah, I was thinking it's 2.255.build number, right? So 2.255.257. Yeah. And then so it becomes 2.255.258. What about uh, LTS? Uh, LTS, fourth. <laughs> A fourth component is allowed, so it would how, be how many, two two. How many bits how are many available? Bits? Not that we've um, ever had more than like four four LTS in a single version, but just as far as I know, sixteen bits in the third position. So this position uh, is uh, is a sixteen bit quantity, and the fourth position they described as being ignored and having no limit. So that the the problem though is if it's possibly ignored, then if you try an update from one LTS dot release to another, it may not work. Uh, that's, and that's a valid point. So right now However, I believe that in LTSs, we're actually, I'm actually using that third component for the LTS portion. Uh, okay. So, and, and I think that's, pro Alex, what I would lobby is let's take that into this issue that I raised. So we've got a, an authoritative location to discuss it because it's a valid point. The, the general upgrade process that I see most Jenkins admins users is they install the MSI once and then they use the inside Jenkins um, upgrade to the newest version. So it just does a war upgrade rather than running the MSI again and doing an MSI based upgrade. So, so, but it's a valid point. It's how do we handle LTS releases if we shift right? And I'm open to other suggestions, certainly. I, I, I'm hesitant, one that I thought of was, well, we could switch to Jenkins 3, but I'm not sure that the project is ready for us to declare Jenkins 3. Linux did it. They just said this kernel is now such and such without any major actual changes, but I suspect that will generate more noise in the, in the uh, community than we're really ready to do just because of a Windows, of uh, the Windows limitation. 22, just stick a two on the end of the first, first digit. Oh, oh, interesting, 22. <laughs> so your suggestion was do this, 22.2. No, but that still doesn't help us. Oh, oh. Oh, and then we would decrement this to be 57. Is that what you're thinking? Shift left. It's 22.0.257. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So, so my proposal is let's have the discussion in this in this um, in the issue. And yeah, that's an interesting al alternative. 2.255.257. But that then has the LTS problem that you noted, Alex. We could go 22 there because there is there is a concept of a display version mentioned. Yeah, we're using that right now. Oh, we're already using that. Yeah, that's for, we're using it for the LTS right now. Good. Okay. I'm looking at I'm looking at from looking at the um, the Wix proj file. We wait a sec. Uh, let me look at it and we can discuss the in the bug that great all right excellent okay as long as we don't I... don't go above a thousand versions for a uh for one uh release line like if we don't go up to two point 
you know, 1000, I think we can make it work. Oh, good. Okay, great. Great. Okay. So Alex, you're okay. If we have that discussion in this, in that, yeah. in that ticket. And yeah, it's fine. Great. All right. Okay. Anything else on release status reports? We, we did release last week 2.249.1 and it's been a little more noisy uh, than, than a typical LTS, but not a lot more noisy. Part of it was up, upgrade center changes. Part of it is, Windows install changes and surprisingly little noise about UI improvements. Just been very successful. Next topic, Jira upgrade plan. Um, here, the Linux Foundation has connected with me. They've sent the poll to schedule our next meeting. I still have not made any progress on the action items. I'll do that this week. Uh, it's, it's, Getting closer and closer to November 30th, when the support of JIRA 7.13 ends. Any questions on JIRA upgrade? Okay, Oracle Cloud conversation. So I met with Oracle Cloud, your Oracle representatives from Oracle Cloud two weeks ago, and um, they shared that they're interested in helping the Jenkins project and having a more active um, Jenkins solution available on Oracle Cloud. They sent me a non-disclosure agreement um, and offered to review our Azure bill looking for cost-saving opportunities. I'm going to have to talk to the governance board to see what, what I can or cannot do with NDAs. As an individual, I'm happy to enter into an NDA with them, but I can't certainly enter into an NDA with them for as the Jenkins project or anything like that. Uh, Alex, any guidance from you on that one in terms of past experience with non-disclosure agreements? Um, I haven't had any in terms of uh, as a board member at this point. So um, we, we definitely need to bring it up with the full board because there are people on the board who have probably had experience with it, like Tyler and, uh, and so forth. So it'd be good to have a discussion with the board for sure. Great. I'll raise it as a question in the mailing list today and hope to get it onto the agenda for tomorrow's board meeting. All right, last topic was we have an Azure customer success manager assigned to us now, Kayla Linville. Um, and customer success manager in this case is intending to find ways to help us use Azure well and effectively. She's provided some documentation that I've, I've still got to review and I'll send it out to infrastructure mailing list as, I, as I've reviewed it and get some insights what we might do with the information she's provided. Any other topics we need to go over today? All right. The recording will be available separately. It takes about an hour usually to process it. Thanks very much. We'll end the meeting here.